Hey guys, it's Anne over at Plant Obsessed, and today we're going to take a look in on the African night crawlers. This is after the second harvest. Looks like we still have enough moisture in here. You see a lot of condensation. Life would be easier if I was about two inches taller. Um, so let's take a look in on these guys and see what they've done with their previous feeding. Still fighting with that bread I see and the mold that comes around with it. You do have to be careful when uh, you're putting bread and, and things in your your compost pile. If you have a mold allergy, it's best to wear you know a mask or something. This is what happens when an avocado pit finally degrades. This is something you usually have to wait about six months for, in case you're wondering. But still valuable food. See what the worms are doing. I think I just fed down the middle. But as you know, if you've been here before, I do like to rummage around and see what's going on with the worms. Looks like a little bit of uh, salad that was left over from the last time, maybe. So, bread's, or the bread, the paper is clumping. Yeah, if you don't, I mean, I often use just paper bedding, but the truth of the matter is it is better if you do have some coconut coir or peat or leaves or something that is not paper, because um, uh, really what paper is is nothing more than wood pulp and, and like some glue. So um, if you saw my water harvesting video a while back, that was, you know, because I used mostly I mean, yes, it got too wet and it didn't dry out right, but um, also one of the problems is that when you're using primarily paper bedding, that, you know, glue problem with just having paper bedding, I think it affects it in the long run if you don't have a variety of, of bedding and, and things that you put in there. Still have the corn in there for anybody who's keeping track. Just moving things around, making sure, keeping air to everything, no shortage of avocado pits. Uh, this room that it's in, uh, the vermi bag is in, is not air conditioned. So the African night crawlers are nice and happy in here. Let me see what the temperature is. Looks like it's 70 right now. Um, but during the day it gets up in the 80s in here. So when I'm working with this bin, I do tend to, my hands don't get cold. When I'm in the basement working in the bins and digging through everything, my hands really do get cold because the basement is in the 60s. That's some more uh, maybe salad. Um, and I do keep these sticks in here. It's more for me than it is for you guys, but basically um, in the wintertime my bonsais are in the same room and when I do trimmings and stuff like that, they uh, I have to put the stuff someplace and I really don't want to drag myself out in the middle of winter to go to the compost pile, which makes worm composting very convenient. Back before I had worms, um, that's exactly what I did. We would have a bucket on the porch, and then every once in a while, somebody would have to traipse across the frozen wasteland to uh, put the compost in the compost pile. So now all we have to do is uh, run down to the basement. And nowadays, run down to the basement and grab the camera. So no real perfect worm ball that we'd want to see here, but I, well, maybe a little bit. That was a mango, and how they love their mangoes. So, getting all my, everything turned up in here, but they're going to have a treat this week. Uh, my friend Cece, um, I'm not really sure what the situation was, if they didn't like the uh, 
watermelon or, or what, but the worms have been gifted an entire watermelon. So that, that will be interesting to see in a week's time, give or take. So I'm going to dig kind of a pit here and put my sticks, sticks back there. And then I'm going to move everything back over that way to make room for the watermelon. Alright, that should give us enough depth to bury that. So I did slice it up so that the, you know, it can be distributed over a larger area. So let's see what we've got. Okay. I'm only going to place this on one half. In case it heats up a little bit, I want them to have some place they can get away from it. Alright. So there we go. Uh, that's a pretty big feeding and it's also kind of a wet feeding. So um, definitely want to make sure that it's covered up good, but then also I'm going to give them some more bedding to uh, help with the situation uh, so that it can, I mean the moisture will evaporate and then the bedding can absorb that on top. So I'm going to see if I can find some just cardboard bedding that's dry, not prepared bedding to put on top right now and that way it'll absorb any of the moisture that comes off of all this watermelon. Looks like it's mostly junk mail, not cardboard. But uh, I'll try and remember to put the link to the video in here for the shredder that I have that it blows through all of the Amazon boxes um, very nicely. I mean, you can tell how thick a cardboard, this is cardboard, not paper. Uh, maybe you can tell how thick that is. That's pretty thick. And it just, it's a trooper. It just keeps on going. So I'll put that um, in there. Uh, it's also linked both below, as I am an Amazon affiliate. Um, I'll link it in there so you know exactly what I have, and it works wonderful. Um, so that's it for these guys today. If you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member, my worm family, click subscribe. And if you want to know what I'm doing, what I'm doing, ring that bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms and everybody. Have a good day.